I'm Pat Kern, and each weekday morning we pick newspaper headlines from across the country to give you the most interesting stuff if you had nothing but time to look at them yourself. Here's what we've got for you today. The best read of the morning for me was a detailed article from the New York Times from writer John Branch on the free throw in basketball. The assertion is that little has changed in 50 odd years on free throws. The NBA average has remained pretty constant at about 75% success. The story says other sports records seem to fall from one decade to the next, whether it's field goal improvements or swimming records, but free throw accuracy stays about the same. Some of the theories here, well, there's no technology to improve from year to year. Strength really isn't a factor, and nobody has come up with a better technique. Also in the New York Times this morning, the big international story, the attack on the visiting Sri Lankan cricket players in Pakistan. The eight killed were mostly members of the police escort. The Times says this reveals embarrassing security gaps in an increasingly unstable country. It is the highest profile terrorist strike on a sports team since the 1972 Munich Olympics. An Indian cricket analyst told the Los Angeles Times, publicity is oxygen for terrorists, and this is about as high profile as you can get. There is a new industry in America. The New York Times says that's the industry of trying to figure out how to make money off the federal bailout spending. One man interviewed is a former countrywide mortgage executive who has been buying up mortgages, sometimes for pennies on the dollar. He says this new business is, quote, off the charts good. If you've been watching the ads, you already know this. The Wall Street Journal says airfares are way down this year, about 40% lower than last June. One example here, San Francisco to New York, typically a $400 ticket on the major airlines. The route's under 250 bucks now. We know the car business has been tough. USA Today leads with the dismal car sales numbers for February. Sales were a little over, not much over, half of what they were a year ago. An executive at Hyundai says, only half jokingly, flat is the new up for the car industry. He says they were jumping up and down, that their sales only fell 1.5%. Yesterday's front page story in the New York Daily News has brought some immediate backpedaling from the fertility doctor who had offered to help you select certain genetic features of your baby, such as picking the eye color. The doctor now says that program is on hold. They will only use the predictive genetic technology for people with genetic diseases they are trying to avoid. Britney Spears is on the front page of this newspaper. Her comeback concert tour started last night in New Orleans. Music writer Jim Farber was there for the show. He says it wasn't great, but it was, he says, a firm step on the road back. There is a similar story about low expectations in the Times-Picayune in New Orleans. An excerpt from music writer Keith Spera says, Which Britney would show up? The disaster from the 2007 MTV Video Music Awards or the golden pop princess restored to her throne? He writes, She came closer to the latter. A heated debate about the rich versus the poor in the LA Times this morning. The front page story looks at the allegations from Republicans that President Obama is waging class warfare. Columnist Michael Hiltzik says it was on the Republican watch that the country tilted in favor of the rich. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee quoted here, he says Lenin and Stalin would love this stuff. While we're in Los Angeles, Antonio Villagrosa will be back for another term as mayor, although he may have other political ambitions that uh, will prevent him from serving the full term. He did have a big enough margin over his nine challengers that he avoids a runoff to return to City Hall. The Boston Herald says Patriot star Tom Brady was unnecessarily mean in choosing the venue for his wedding to model Giselle Bunchen. The church where they were married is the church his ex, Bridget Moynihan, attends. A friend of Moynihan sums it up, saying, of all of the churches in L.A., this is the one you had to choose? On the topic of men who aren't popular, the latest Bachelor controversy covered in his hometown Seattle Times. Jason Mesnick has dumped the woman he proposed to in the final episode of the ABC series. Now he says he's in love with the runner-up who he dropped weeks ago. The New York Post in this story says fans of The Bachelor are virtually unanimous. This year's Bachelor is a total jerk. The Berean Church in Nebraska has 7,000 members, 20 pastors. Took in $145,000 in donations this past weekend. The numbers are typically around that level. On Tuesday morning, the armored guard showed up as usual to bring the money to the bank. As the Omaha World Herald reports today, Fifteen minutes after he showed up and took the money, the real armored guard showed up. Church staff realized they had turned the cash over to an imposter. A good analysis piece in the Washington Post today looking at Rush Limbaugh's hope that Barack Obama fails. The story says, for a man who expresses no desire to lead the Republican Party, Rush Limbaugh certainly has a knack of creating problems for those who do. 
There's a clever feature in the Post this morning with March Madness days away. The newspaper's running a tournament of beer. Beer tasters pitting one brew against another, trying to come up with the best. They call the event the Big Yeast Tournament. You can track it online. From the fashion pages, the designers are showing this week in Milan. They seem to have a particular fondness for the 80s. The Post calls this 80s regurgitation, with designers looking back in anger. Maybe they're partly trying to protect their turf, but dentists may have a point here. They say these teeth whitening shops that are appearing around the country are threatening dental health. The Houston Chronicle says customers are drawn to the teeth cleaning shops because of competitive pricing. Dentists say a lot more training should be required. Tony Shalhoub is famous as the actor on Monk. His brother Dan is famous now too as designer of the Shapoopy dog cleanup device. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel says this invention started as a modified golf ball retriever. Finally, a good USA Today snapshot this morning. Corporate IT departments provided the details on how employee computers are most likely to be damaged. 34% of data loss is blamed on spilled food or drink on the computer. But 13% of data loss on employee laptops is simply because of worker anger. We do this every day at patspapers.com. If you scroll down on our main page, you will find links to read the individual stories from the newspaper websites featured today.